On the 8th of February, 1587, the executioner's axe swung down wildly onto the neck of the former Queen of Scotland. The first strike of the axe missed and embedded into the back of her skull, and the executioner then dislodged this weapon and he tried again. This time he was more successful, but still the head of this queen had not been separated from her body. He finally sawed through the last sinews with his weapon. The head of Mary, Queen of Scots, was then showed to the crowd, and this was a woman who had been executed for being involved in treason against Queen Elizabeth I, her cousin. Following Mary's dramatic execution, her remains were collected inside of a coffin and were then taken away. She is remembered as a queen who was buried not once, but twice. Today she lays at rest inside of Westminster Abbey, under a huge tomb that her son, James I, created for her. However, today Mary is not the only person who is laid to rest inside of this burial vault. It took Elizabeth I a number of months to decide where to bury Mary, Queen of Scots. She and her privy councillors finally settled on having her buried inside of Peterborough Cathedral, opposite the burial vault of Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Mary's body was taken into the cathedral and there was a large procession, but she would not be buried here for long. Following the death of the final Tudor queen, Elizabeth I, Mary's son, James I, came onto the throne and he then decided to have his mother buried inside of a new tomb at the heart of worship in Britain, Westminster Abbey. James wanted his mother buried amongst the medieval kings and queens who had been buried there, and James then had a huge marble tomb created which was actually slightly bigger than that of Elizabeth I, in a final nod to his mother's legacy. Mary, Queen of Scots, was exhumed from Peterborough Cathedral, and she was in 1612 taken to Westminster Abbey, James I's huge marble tomb for his mother is found on the south side of the Lady Chapel, and this was a huge Tudor mausoleum where Henry VII and Elizabeth of York are buried. Elizabeth I was also interred opposite here. Mary's tomb and effigy showed her wearing a close-fitting coif and a crowned Scottish lion was found at her feet. She was buried after arriving inside of the Abbey, but in the centuries following her reburial, the vault that she's buried in was broken into a number of times when people investigated the whereabouts of her coffin and that they found that next to her were a number of other coffins. Arthur P. Stanley, the Dean of Westminster, was granted a royal warrant to search for the coffin of Mary's son, James I, and he explored multiple burial vaults inside of the abbey. He found James interred inside the same burial vault as Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, but he did search for James inside of his mother's vault. There was a rumour that he had been interred alongside his mother, and to look for this he entered Mary's vault and found that the coffin of Mary was placed against the north wall of the vault. Found was her lead coffin, meaning that the wooden coffin, or outer shell, may have been removed to inter other significant people inside of here. There were clearly many other coffins inside of this vault, and Mary's burial vault had been broken into a number of times to allow these coffins to then be placed alongside her. It's likely this was never the plan for her vault to be used for anyone else, and Arthur Stanley found the coffin of Mary, Queen of Scots, was underneath the coffin of Lady Arabella Stuart, who had been placed here, and also inside the vault were the coffins and remains of Anne Hyde, the Duchess of York, Henry the Prince of Wales, Elizabeth the Winter Queen of Bohemia, Prince Rupert of the Rhine, and a number of James II's children. A lot of these figures were actually descendants of the Stuart dynasty and distant relatives of Mary Queen of Scots, meaning that inside this vault was a large presence of those related to the Scottish ruling family. The burial vault of Mary Queen of Scots was then sealed up, and it's believed that this was the last time in which the burial vault was opened. Today, the huge tomb and memorial to her shows a remarkable life like resemblance to her and also the portraits. She was subjected to a terrifying and barbaric execution at the hands of the Tudor Queen Elizabeth I, who greatly regretted ordering the former Scottish Queen's death. 
with the hands of a botching executioner. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.